Welcome to Ideas for Success, where one idea can make a world of difference. Happy Thanksgiving. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, and now I'm actually doing it because I think after 400 years, we probably could use a little reminder about why this whole thing exists, this holiday, which I went ahead and I uh, did a little research and I found something that I think will give you some perspective. Found this on uh, an article on the web. I'm going to go ahead and share this with you now. This was written by Stephen McDowell, and uh, he talks about the origins of this celebration as a religious event. So obviously this was the, the pilgrims, and I'll get to the point here where um, he names Governor Bradford, who was the governor of the, the colony there over in Plymouth. He appointed a day of Thanksgiving and invited the nearby Wampanoag Indians, Native Americans, Squanto's adopted tribe. Squanto was a guy who helped make peace between the, you know, the settlers and the, the locals. Anyway, to celebrate and to give thanks unto God with them. So this was a coming together of uh, the Native people as well as the, the pilgrims, the people who came seeking religious freedom, and now they're giving thanks for being able to eat, basically. So they were able to survive. This guy Squanto helped them learn how to fish and plant corn and all that. So it says here, while many people today follow the pilgrims' example of feasting at Thanksgiving, they uh, too often ignore the entire reason that the pilgrims set aside a special day. This was to give thanks to Almighty God. So uh, it's a holiday, which if you look at the word holiday, it means holy day. So and this, this was a more religious approach, uh, perhaps, than what most people experience in modern times when they think of Thanksgiving. Okay, but there were some troubles with that. So this was 1621, 400 years ago, or 401, as these words are coming out of my mouth. Uh, but even then, they had, even after their first uh, little celebration there, they had trouble. So after their Thanksgiving celebration, 35 new persons unexpectedly arrived, and they had no provisions, right? So, so these colonists, right, this, this commune, basically, they were receiving other people who came with no provisions, just hoping to get free stuff, I suppose. Now, does that sound familiar in modern times? Well, well sure, sure. These people have survived. Well, maybe we can go and, and we can, you know, get what they've got. Okay, and these people being religious people, they, they wanted to, to assist and provide, and yet it left them very hungry. So here comes the next year, the harvest of 1622 proved insufficient. This is really rich, okay? So I like this article because the author quotes Governor Bradford repeatedly throughout this article. So this is going right to the source of what really happened. It says here, outside help appeared doubtful, so the pilgrims considered how they could produce a larger harvest. Through God's wisdom... Okay, they chose to replace the collective farming they had practiced the two preceding years, being imposed upon them by their sponsoring company, basically their government, with individual farming assigned to every family a parcel of land. Aha! Aha! So they abandoned the collectivist approach, which had been imposed upon them, and they went with an individual farming, assigning to every family a parcel of land. Bradford wrote, this had very good success, for it made all hands very industrious. Oh, imagine that. So as much more corn was planted than otherwise would have been by any means the governor or any other could use. All right, so the governor, he's referring to himself in this case. And gave far better content. The women now went willingly into the field and took their little ones with them to set corn which before would allege weakness and inability, whom to have compelled would have been thought great tyranny. So translation, here were people who before were bemoaning, I can't, I'm not able, you need to do for me. And, um, and so, you know, if you forced me, then you're a tyrant. Force me to be productive. No, how dare you? And now suddenly, quite willingly, quite willingly, <laughs> they're, they're at, the, I mean, they want to eat, right? So the stakes were, were a, a bit higher or, or a bit more obvious. Going on, it says here, the pilgrims learned the hard way that communism doesn't work, even among a covenant community. Okay, so, so we're going to do this because, you know, we're special because, you know, we're, you know, uh, religious or and whatever, you know, label we want to have. And so now this whole collectivist idea should work for us. Bradford wrote that the experience that was had in this common course and condition 
tried sundry years, so that's over the years, and that amongst godly and sober men may well evince, that means to reveal the existence of, evince the vanity of that conceit of Plato's and other ancients applauded by some of later times, that the taking away of property and bringing in community into a commonwealth would make them happy and flourishing, as if they were wiser than God. Again, they relate everything back to, to Scripture and, and their interpretation of uh, the Bible and Christian writings. Okay, So the pilgrims' hard work resulting from them being able to directly benefit from the fruit of their labors caused them to plant about six times more crops than the previous year. How does that sound? So suddenly they didn't have too many excuses left, right? As the old saying goes, some people have results and some people have reasons. Okay, so they dropped their reasons and their excuses. They got on with it and they got results six times. The harvest of 1623 brought great plenty to each person with the more industrious having access to sell to others. From the time they started a biblical economic system, no famine or general want ever again existed among them. And he quotes references here. You can get into all that. So the point of this is, uh, number one, obviously, that that collectivism in, in the general sense, right? And call it whatever you want. In modern times, people have all kinds of interesting labels to, you know, call communism something else or whatever. But it just it just doesn't work. It never has worked in sundry years, right? Here we are talking about something that happened 400 years ago, and uh, which I think is worth remembering here in the, the land of opportunity, right? That, uh, that it is the, the individual effort and that, that drive to produce, which in, in my experience is the basis of uh, morale and self-esteem, that you produced something, you're having an effect, you're doing something, you've got purpose, right? And action, I mean, that's, that's good, that's happy living. As opposed to the, hey, I'm showing up here and I'm not able and you need to be able for me and give to me. Right. So these people, although they, they came to to the new world, right, they came to the Americas for freedom and not necessarily free stuff. They still had within their ranks uh, and their so-called leaders the indoctrination of collectivism. So it didn't work. I mean, you can read the whole article and there were a lot of people that starved to death, like most of them. Right. So the Thanksgiving celebration, you know, praising God for the bounty and for just, you know, being able to eat corn and, you know, catch a fish or something, that that was a big deal, right? So, so their standards were, were right there. Now, we have higher standards, I would, I would imagine, right? And we've got a lot of modern conveniences. It's been 400 years. But between then and now, a lot of times people forget, whole societies forget, Right. This whole idea of, of uh, you know, communism killed over 100 million people just in the 20th century alone. If you look at the Maoist and the, everything that happened. And, and we have we have people that still to this day forget that to have any powerful and successful and productive group, the component parts of that group must be powerful, productive, successful people. Right. So the individuals are the component parts of the group. So this brings back the the responsibility to, to any of us who seek to have success and to be part of the solution in the lives of others, as the old saying goes, is if it's meant to be, it's up to me. So yes, we give thanks for the heavenly blessings. And, and what are those blessings? If we, if we were to, to nail it down to, to one thing that I think we could all give thanks for, and you don't need the calendar to tell you it's Thanksgiving Day to do this, it's your own ability. I am so thankful for my ability to be, to do, to have, right? And and to also be that example to others, right? Who are seeking to be, do, and have more in their life. So wherever you're at with this, and uh, this wasn't meant to be necessarily a religious or, or uh, political discussion, although it's interwoven into this, this holy day, this holiday, inextricably interwoven into it, right? You've got the, the historical fact of here's what didn't work, and now here's what does work. It's called capitalism in modern times. And I think the problem with capitalism is, is that it was named by its enemies. What you, if you read the article here, you'll see it was basically cooperativism. That would probably be a better name for what they did, 
right? So we're going to cooperate. We're all going to do this and we're going to do it as individuals and we're going to come together and then we can trade, right? Hey, I got too much corn. You got some fish. Let, you know, let's do that, right? Of course, this was, this was before there was an IRS and a Federal Reserve System, but, but the principles stand the test of time. Let's not forget them as other societies have done throughout history. Right. We here we are in the land of opportunity. If you're here in, in the United States with me and regardless of where you are, the principles exist and the principles are workable. And it only took what another 150, 170 years for a few guys like, uh, you know, Tom Jefferson and Ben and, uh, you know, John Adams and these guys to to come ahead and, and, and codify. Right. To put down, you know, here is uh, a constitution. Here's what makes this this thing we're calling the United States. Here's what makes this work. Now we've codified it. Read the document. Here's the instruction manual, right? And go live your life. All of this, once again, is based on a, uh, a sense of, of faith, morals, and um, an idea of a greater power than just the state or, or just, you know, our, our commune. Okay. It celebrates the the ability of the individual and as a cooperating group, the ability of that group. So wherever you are right now, happy Thanksgiving. I hope this finds you well, and I'll look forward to seeing you on another video. Bye for now.